Okay, so uh, we'll start then. Um, I'm going to have an overview, uh, updating um, initial upfront therapies in gastric cancer. I think there have been some important new studies uh, in uh, chemotherapy agents, and I think Howard's going to talk uh, more at length about immunotherapy drugs uh, tomorrow and how we now place these in the treatment of gastric cancer management. So these are my disclosures. These are largely consult consultancies and, uh, uh, and advisory boards. So what I'm going to review today uh, is I'll talk about uh, conventional chemotherapy for first-line treatment, which really in the vast majority of patients should be two-drug therapy. Uh, I'll talk about some uh, seminal uh, phase three trials, I think, that revisit this question. Uh, we'll talk about a new <clears throat> novel cytotoxic agent, which TAS-102 is now available as a third or fourth line uh, agent in advanced gastric cancer. We'll talk about uh, angiogenesis inhibitors um, <clears throat> and focus more on what's uh, in the, the context of ongoing trials, DNA damage repair agents. Uh, we'll talk about uh, genomics and uh, how uh, genomic studies have potentially clarified targets, and then I'll mention a little bit immunotherapy, uh, uh, and we'll because I know that uh, Howard's going to spend uh, an entire talk on this uh, tomorrow. Actually, today. Next slide. So I always show this slide when I give a talk in gastric cancer because uh, if we look at uh, these, are, this summarizes all the, the uh, phase three trials of different chemotherapy regimens and metastatic disease. And if we, whoops, can we turn this timer off thing? So if we look at the center of the table, those are the two drug regimens, capecitabine, platinum, Fulfox, and Fulfiri. We can see really response rates in the 35 to 40 percent range. Uh, the uh, triplet regimens, not arguably not much better, 35 to 45 percent. But key is, if you look at the time on treatment, time to progression, it's the same, five to six months. Overall survival, it's the same. So nine to 10 months, not a clear difference across randomized trials uh, for um, the efficacy of chemotherapy, uh, looking at two versus three drugs. Does epirubicin add a benefit? Uh, we've actually denigrated um, epirubicin in NCCN guidelines. We recommend against using it. Uh, based on this and a, a CLGB uh, trial. This was a French trial uh, that compared uh, Fulfiri versus ECX, two drugs versus three drugs. This was 416 patients with metastatic gastric cancer. And um, you can see that the response rates were no different, about 40%. There was no difference in progression-free survival. There was no difference in overall survival. And actually, if you look at the curve there, that's the time to treatment failure. So that factors in toxicity of treatment. And the yellow curve was ECX. So ECX was actually more toxic, was no more efficacious. And I mean, arguably, it's not comparing it to Fulfox or 5 few platinum but it makes an argument that uh, three drugs is not better than two drugs. And then the other study, can we turn off that little... What, what's that thing on the, or it's maybe only on my, my viewer here, sorry. So uh, then we have the CLGB trial, which was, it was a randomized phase two trial, so it really wasn't adequately powered to make a head-to-head -head comparison. But here we have head-to-head -head in a phase two trial, ECF versus Fulfox versus a third regimen, arinotecan platinum, which was left, less efficacious. And the bottom line in this randomized phase two trial was Fulfox behaved very similar to ECF. On this trial, all patients got cetuximab, which arguably doesn't add any benefit. But if we look at uh, ECF and Fulfox, we don't see differences in response rates, progression for your overall survival, and ECF was more toxic. So uh, this is one of the few comparisons of uh, uh, Fulfox versus ECF not really showing any difference. And based on these studies, and also the failure of epirubicin in uh, adjuvant and neoadjuvant trials, we really have denigrated uh, the ECF regimen. It, it's now a category two um, a regimen, and uh, uh, we don't recommend its use in clinical practice. So what about FLOT? I mean, FLOT has really been hyped now as the better neoadjuvant treatment, and it is, we'll talk about this more at length tomorrow. Uh, the FLOT regimen is clearly better than ECF as a preoperative treatment, but is this something that we should give routinely to all patients with metastatic disease. 
Uh, so the Germans actually did um, a trial called FLAT65, which looked at older patients, because you know, most of the patients in our practice are in their 60s and 70s. And it was a modest randomized trial, 143 patients, the median age was 70. Uh, they used the flow regimen, which is 5-FU-oxaloplatin, with or without the addition of docetaxel. And the response rate was higher for the triplet regimen, 49 versus 28%. But the, there was no significant difference in progression-free or overall survival, and the toxicity more than doubled. So you had a twice as high rate of toxicity for FLOT versus uh, a full FOX-like regimen. And here, if we look at the top curves, uh, we look at PFS and overall survival, there really is not a meaningful difference uh, for uh, this treatment. So I, I virtually never use this regimen in patients over the age of 60. Uh, and now we have this Japanese trial. Uh, this actually got buried. Uh, it isn't a Lancet publication, but it's in Lancet Gastroenterology and Hepatology. How many of you read Lancet Gastroenterology and Oh, you do? OK. You do? OK. All right, so this, this is a really, a, so this is an important, this is a practice changing phase three trial. So the Japanese, I always admire Japanese oncologists. They don't like to hurt patients. You know, they really like to have treatments that are tolerable. They don't like to hurt patients. They're, they don't ascribe to the philosophy that more, the more the merrier. And this was a randomized trial in metastatic gastric cancer of their standard, which is S1 cisplatinum, with or without docetaxel. And this is over 700 patients. So this is a negative trial. So. So we really shouldn't uh, uh, um, really inflict triplet therapy on patients in metastatic disease. There's not a clear uh, survival benefit. OK, also they looked at histologic subtype, uh, diffuse versus an intestinal. There, was, there has been some rumbling in the literature that maybe a taxane works better in diffuse gastric cancers, but this was not the case either. So it didn't make any difference uh, if we look at the histologic subtype. So, so I think we have important new data for chemotherapy. I think an NCCN now reinforces the use of two drug regimens in metastatic disease, Fulfox, Capox, but also Fulfiri. Three drug regimens, adding a taxane. We've got two negative trials that don't show a survival benefit for either FLOT uh, or uh, uh, Japanese uh, data. Should anybody get a three drug regimen? I usually re reserve this for a high functional status, younger patient but somebody that's really got a high symptom burden. So maybe that few percentage points of a response will make a difference uh, sh earlier on. And obviously, these patients have to be willing to tolerate greater side effects. So what about new drugs? So I borrowed this slide from uh, 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 Kohei uh, uh, Shitara, my colleague from Japan, uh, basically to show you that there's a sea of negative trials uh, we've highlighted the positive uh, phase three trials of targeted agents, so uh, trastuzumab, uh, the ramasurumab uh, trials are positive, and apatinib, uh, and uh, attraction, which is uh, nivolumab and gastric cancer. And now we can add to the list TAS-102, but the vast number of recent randomized trials of new agents in gastric cancer have not improved outcome. So angiogenesis agents, bevacizumab, this was a big disappointment, failed to improve outcome first line with chemotherapy. In the Avagast trial, bevacizumab added to first line chemotherapy. Uh, the positive data come from ramasurumab. This targets the VEGFR2 receptor. And ramasurumab in second line treatment, if you look at the two survival curves, when you, whether you give ramasurumab as a single agent versus best supportive care or combining it with paclitaxel versus paclitaxel alone, you do get survival benefits for this drug. Uh, and uh, in, uh, the real uh, impact on practice is to combine it with paclitaxel. That's now the de facto standard of care. Second line is paclitaxel ramasurumab, which improved overall survival, PFS, and response rates. However, uh, when we tried to move this drug first line on the rainfall trial, you can see no difference in survival. So, this drug uh, really remains uh, uh, an important drug second line, and it really is the standard regimen that we should consider the benchmark. Uh, response rates approaching 30-40 percent, and a median survival of nine months, which is respectable. So this is the backbone for second line drug development. Uh, 
And also ramucirumab may modulate the tumor microenvironment, impacting on Tregs. It may also have an impact on DNA damaging agents. So there's a lot of interest in combining ramucirumab with PARP inhibitors or immunotherapy drugs. And there are trials of ramucirumab with or without paclitaxel with checkpoint inhibitors, PARP inhibitors, and other agents that are ongoing in early uh, phase development. What about tyrosine kinase inhibitors? None of them are approved for gastric cancer in the US. Uh, but I will mention two, uh, apatinib, this is actually approved in China. This is a VEGF uh, receptor-directed tyrosine kinase inhibitor in a randomized phase three trial from China. Uh, survival was improved by two months, and you can see a modest overall survival improvement for apatinib over best supportive care. And there is now a randomized trial ongoing. It hasn't gotten a lot of press, uh, uh, best supportive care versus apatinib in late-line treatment of gastric cancer. Uh, Regorafenib, also a signal of activity in a phase two trial from Australia. Uh, we know this is the VEGFR, multi-targeted tyrosine kinase inhibitor. In the phase two trial, uh, it modestly improved progression-free survival, and there was a survival trend that you can see on the right that favored uh, regorafenib. So there is an ongoing phase three trial. I think that Axel is running uh, best supportive care versus uh, regorafenib third line. And there's really exciting data about combining uh, regorafenib potentially with uh, checkpoint inhibitors. Very provocative data from a phase one, two trial in colon and in gastric cancer combining regorafenib with nivolumab uh, where they reported uh, a response rate of 25 to 30% in gastric cancer. So keep that on your radar and that's likely to be uh, studied further also. What about novel cytotoxics? Um, there was an oral taxane, uh, DHP-107 was compared to IV paclitaxel, which they uh, showed non-inferiority. I don't know if this drug is going to move forward. Uh, similar response rates. Um, and then uh, the uh, other drug, which uh, this actually surprised me at the GI ESMO meeting in July. This, I hadn't heard anything about this drug. TAS-118 uh, is S1 plus leucovorin. And the SOLAR trial was a head-to-head -head comparison of TAS-118, so it's S1 leucovorin oxaliplatin versus S1 cisplatinum. And this was a positive trial. This uh, had a higher response rate and improvements in overall and progression-free survival. So S1 may finally be dethroned in uh, Japan. Uh, they're probably going to have a national day of mourning in Japan. Uh, they, they deify S1 in Japan. They actually got approved based on phase two data. So TAS-118 may, plus oxaliplatin may become the new standard for metastatic gastric cancer in uh, Japan. And then TAS-102, this is the approved drug now in the US. We'll debate uh, this versus immunotherapy tomorrow. Uh, TAS-102 versus best supportive care third line. TAS-102 uh, combines an oral fluorinated pyrimidine, trifluoridine with tapiracil, which facilitates oral bioavailability. And this is the schema of the TAGS trial. This is published in um, uh, Lancet Oncology. Uh, this was a comparison in chemotherapy refractory gastric cancer of uh, TAS-102 versus uh, placebo, uh, all treated with best supportive care. And there was a modest improvement of overall survival uh, from 3.6 to 5.7 months with a hazard ratio of 0.69. Uh, and progression-free survival is also modestly approved, improved. Uh, there really weren't responses to this drug. It was really, it's kind of like colon cancer. It's a stabilizing agent. Uh, side effects were manageable, and we'll talk of how does this stack up against immunotherapy drugs in uh, late-line treatment. What about DNA damaging agents, PARP inhibitors? Uh, there was a signal from the randomized phase two of paclitaxel plus or minus elaparib where they saw uh, improvement in overall survival, particularly uh, ATM negative patients. That's the uh, ataxia tel uh, tasia protein. If that's missing, you may be more responsive to PARP inhibitors. So then uh, the GOLD trial was performed, a phase three trial, paclitaxel with or without elaparib. There's an argument that the elaparib was underdosed in this trial, 100 milligram BID, and they only had 94 uh, ATM negative patients enriched. There was no difference in overall survival, even though it trended uh, 6.9 versus 8.8 .8 months, and uh, even a lesser difference in the ATM negative patients, 12 versus 10 months. Uh, and they, they were looking for a big difference. They were looking for a five-month difference, 
and arguably uh, they underdosed the drug. But this was a negative trial um, uh, in even in a biomarker selected population. But as I said, there may be the potential uh, for ramucirumab to biomodulate these drugs. So there are ongoing uh, trials um, in early phase combining uh, PARP inhibitors with ramucirumab with or without ataxane and also combining PARP inhibitors with immune checkpoint inhibitors. Uh, stem cell pathways, this is an obituary. I'm not gonna spend time on this. Napabucasin, this is a potential um, um, a stem cell inhibitor drug. The phase three brighter trial was a randomized trial of paclitaxel with or without napabucasin, and they closed it early due to futility. Uh, however, there still is an interest in this drug. Uh, napabucasin may potentially target uh, beta catenin. Uh, this is involved in T cell uh, infiltration. And there's an interest still in looking at this drug uh, in combination with uh, checkpoint inhibitors. MMP9, this is another obituary. Uh, this is the matrix metalloproteinase inhibitor. Uh, data were presented at the US GI symposium back in January. Uh, the phase one uh, trial looked encouraging. They had a 57% response rate when you combine this with Fulfox. But in the phase three uh, gamma one trial uh, with Fulfox, 432 patients, they were, it was negative for overall survival despite a slight improvement in PFS and uh, response rate. So another uh, negative phase three trial. Uh, I wanna talk a little bit about Claudin 18.2. This is a gap junction protein that's highly overexpressed in gastric cancer. 80 to 90% of patients express this protein. It's also not present in normal tissues, so it may avoid um, uh, off-target uh, toxicities. Uh, this antibody uh, may stimulate ADCC, so it may be an immunomodulatory drug. And the FAST trial was a randomized uh, phase two trial of zolbituximab, which targets uh, this protein. Uh, and this was a randomized trial of EOX, and then EOX with two different dose levels of zolbituximab. And you can see uh, it looked like there was a pretty striking survival difference, uh, uh, pa all patients had to have some positivity for expressing this, uh, this uh, target, but there was an improvement in overall survival as well as uh, a two-year survival. And if we look at all patients, it was about a five-month improvement in survival, and if you were a high expressor, you got about a six or seven-month improvement in survival. So there are ongoing phase three trials of zolbituximab ongoing. Uh, Illustro is, uh, um, this is a phase two looking at uh, zolbituximab alone uh, or plus Fulfox. And then there are two phase three trials. There's Spotlight, which is Fulfox plus or minus uh, zolbituximab. And then there's a second randomized trial of Kpox with or without uh, zolbituximab. And I encourage you, if you have access to this trial, it's a first line trial, uh, interesting phase two data, and it's a biomarker that's fairly commonly uh, overexpressed. So uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about genomics. Uh, so there are four genomic subsets in gastric cancer, uh, genomically unstable tumors, 50% of patients. These are the RTK uh, amplified patients, the HER2 patients, but a number of failed targets, including MET and EGFR. MSI high, this is the group that we can target immunotherapy drugs, genomically stable, no clear, not clearly targetable. And the EBV, the Epstein-Barr virus associated tumors may also be candidates for uh, immunotherapy uh, drugs. So HER2 mixed results, uh, tristizumab has modest first-line activity. The TOGA trial got the drug approved for first-line chemotherapy, but in the first line, lapatinib and pertuzumab did not improve survival uh, compared uh, to uh, either chemotherapy alone or to adding pertuzumab to pertuzumab to trastuzumab did not improve outcome. So not a role yet for dual targeted HER2 therapy and gastric. Second line, uh, negative trials, uh, trastuzumab eptancine. This is the conjugate drug of uh, trastuzumab and the antimicrotubule drug. Uh, this was negative in comparison to paclitaxel. And then uh, an important uh, trial for practice consideration is this Japanese TIAC trial. Uh, should we continue trastuzumab into second line chemotherapy? This was a randomized trial from Japan, patients progressing on first line trastuzumab, and uh, there was no difference in PFS or overall survival in patients that got chemotherapy alone with or without uh, 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 continuation of trastuzumab. 
I only include this slide to show that about 16% uh, of patients actually lose their HER2 expression when they become resistant to trastuzumab. And here, we, from Memorial, we've got paired biopsies of patients pre-trastuzumab and post-trastuzumab. And on the right, you can see acquisition of all these mutations and genetic abnormalities in trastuzumab-resistant patients. And all of these are potential, potentially targetable resistance mechanisms, including EGFR, uh, ERB4, IGF1R, and MET. FGF, it's a work in progress. I'll just mention the ongoing randomized trial of bemertuzumab, which is the FGFR targeting antibody. There's an ongoing trial in FGFR overexpressing patients uh, called the FIDER trial, uh, full fox with or without bemertuzumab. Then there are these interesting bispecific antibodies, margituximab. This is a conjugate of trastuzumab and um, uh, an antibody that may recruit uh, uh, NK cells and um, ADCC. And uh, there's provocative data combining this with pembrolizumab. Uh, one drug that really has legs is DS8201. This is a conjugate of trastuzumab and a topo-1 inhibitor. In uh, second-line uh, trastuzumab-resistant patients, they reported a 43% response rate. So there's an ongoing randomized trial of this drug. And I'll mention briefly CEA, TCB. This is a pretty toxic antibody. Maybe Neil will talk about this. Uh, some deaths with this, combining this with atezolizumab. It may work, but it's pretty toxic. Uh, nivolumab, uh, Howard's going to talk about this. Uh, the randomized trial uh, got the drug approved in Japan. Keynote 59 is the large expansion cohort phase two. Uh, Keynote 61, this is chemotherapy versus paclitaxel which did not show uh, superiority. So uh, I'm not going to get into the immunotherapy drugs because I know Howard's going to talk about it. But just to summarize, if we look at uh, novel and uh, recent data in metastatic gastric cancer, they reinforce that two drugs is the standard of care, particularly the Japanese trial. Angiogenesis agents, ramisuramab is the standard of care with paclitaxel. And tyrosine kinase inhibitors are in development. We now have a new drug, TAS-102, approved in refractory disease. Uh, genomics, we hope, will identify targetable subpopulations, which currently are limited to HER2 and MSI high and EBV patients. Second line use of HER2 targeted agents has failed. Uh, there's a list here of negative agents, PARP and M MP9. FGF is an ongoing story. IMAP-362, I encourage you to put patients on these trials. And the immunotherapy question, uh, Howard will uh, address. Thanks very much.